What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today we're actually talking about the PlayStation 5. PlayStation 5 three years later and where it stacks up. I just did a video on the Xbox Series X three years later, so go ahead and check that video out if you haven't already. And also, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe or follow one of the social media channels I have down below in the description. But anyways, we're going to jump right into it. This is about the PlayStation 5 and pretty much what I think about the system and where we are pretty much with it. And the thing about PlayStation, I'm very optimistic about when it comes to their game lineup, uh, what they have coming up soon. But this year has been a weird year and I'm going to get into that when it comes to their games and everything like that. But it's been a weird year just having a PlayStation and just what I, my thoughts of that are. So we're going to get right into it, like I said, and we're going to start talking about the system itself, the hardware and pretty much where it stacks up. Now, in reality, my system is still extremely quiet, which is really nice to say. If you had a PlayStation 4, I don't care which model you had, but if you really had the launch edition PlayStation 4, then you know the struggles of how that system made a lot of noise. Well, all these years later, my PlayStation 5 is still totally, totally silent. It doesn't really make much of a noise when it's running. Like my Xbox, I do use compressed air, so I'm constantly cleaning it. I feel like that actually helps in the long run because I just wanted to run as well as it did when I first got it. But like I said, the system is still extremely quiet. And that's one thing I do appreciate. It doesn't matter what type of demanding game I'm playing, I never hear the fans on that thing. I feel like Sony did a really good job with the airflow to make sure that this system isn't as loud as the previous systems because all those memes were hilarious as far as the system goes and actually run it the ui is mostly the same yeah sony has added a few different things to the ui but for the most part the ui is roughly the same and i'm totally fine with it sony has done something that microsoft just can't seem to get right they release a ui and that's just mostly it between the playstation 3 all the way to the playstation 5 they've had a very simple ui and i just love it for whatever reason sony does just enough to always improve it but not make it feel old and outdated and, I, and the one thing I like about the UI on the PlayStation 5 is it's not littered with ads. So if I'm just browsing my games, I'm not going to the far left side where I, where I actually will go to the shop. I'm just scrolling between my games. I don't feel like I'm just getting a bunch of ads all over the place. Um, now there is a section, again, like I said, on the left side that does have ads, but in reality, I'm rarely ever there. I'm just bouncing between that list of games I have and then my collection, and I don't really see it. That's not a huge issue. I just, I'm just saying I prefer how Sony does their UI. It just feels cleaner for whatever reason. Now, I do know that things will pop up at the bottom, but it's relevant to the game, and that's my biggest thing. I brought up in my X Xbox video. Xbox seems to show me a lot of stuff that's not relevant to me when it's ad related. And I'm like, if, if you're, if I'm playing a game and you see I like this game, you're saying, hey, do you want to buy this DLC to further this game? Sure. I mean, that is an ad, but it's relevant to what I'm doing. But if I'm playing a game and you're talking about something that I don't even play or I don't care about or whatever, I'm like, can you not show me this ad? And sometimes it's not even game related on the Xbox. You know, like we all know about the Doritos and Mountain Dew back in the day, but. I'm going off topic, but there used to be ads for Drills of Mountain Dew on Xbox, which, you know, it's kind of funny thing about now, but sometimes there's just ads for random stuff, and I really love how Sony does their UI. Now, the thing about it is, though, when I do go into the store with Sony, and this is going to kind of relate to the software, kind of relate to the, the network, I have this issue where stuff just does not load. Um, I was able to catch a video today of it. I turned my PlayStation on just today, like a couple hours ago. Um, to do some b-roll for this for this video and none of my tiles were coming on and that's when I'm in the store you'll see a couple of images here and there but for the most part it's just blank pages that load and load and load and I think the reason why it does that is because at least the model I have I, it still seems like it has network issues Sony has released so many updates over the years um, and they have been improving the system when I first got the system it had so many bugs and and it drove me up the wall. I talk about it in all my older videos, but it drove me up the wall. And it's not just mine. Um, I got three PlayStation 5s, when I, the, all on launch day. One for me, one for my wife, and one for a friend. All three of us had very similar issues. I think mine's was the worst. I got mine's from Sony directly. The one from my wife, I believe I got hers off of Amazon, and one from a friend I got from Walmart, I believe. And we all had like really bad issues, but the one that was for me, it was just significantly the worst. Long story short, Sony has improved it over this time, but the two lingering issues I have, it's all related to the network, is that one, when I log into my PlayStation, majority of the time I'm offline. And it's not that I'm just offline, like showing offline, it's that I'm kicked off the internet. 
Um, I'll go to my profile. It won't be highlighted showing I'm online. It says unknown. I have to reconnect the network connection. And then I have to go in. And a lot of times I have to just totally restart the whole system all together to actually maybe see stuff in the store. There's a 50-50 chance. And here's the kicker. My PlayStation 5 is hardwired in with an Ethernet cord. It's a Cat 6 Ethernet cord. My network, not only to support Cat 6, it supports Wi-Fi 6. But even though I don't use Wi-Fi 6, I'm using that actual Ethernet cord. I'm still having this issue. So I don't fully understand what's going on on the Sony side. My Xbox does not have the same amount of issues, but my PlayStation still has issues. And PlayStation and Xbox are using the exact same Cat 6 cable going into the exact same um, access point, you know. And it's something with the PlayStation 5, and I don't fully understand it. It will always drop connection. Now, on my wife's end, here's the interesting thing. Her PlayStation 5, it just loses internet altogether. She's in the same room as the modem, and her PlayStation 5 continuously will not connect to the internet. And there's a lot of trying to play around with it, get to work. I'll keep trying to connect. If I forget the network, I'll delete the network. I'll unplug it, do whatever I need to do. And it still won't recognize a PlayStation 5 a lot of the time. We have done factory resets. We have done so much with it. And it's just hit or miss if it works. So that means a lot of times we'll, when we actually do want to play it, games aren't updated. There was a patch or an update or something that didn't go through to the PlayStation. And it causes a lot of issues. So in reality, you know, three years later, a lot of the stuff has been fixed. I'm still struggling with this network issue on the PlayStation 5. Comment down below if you guys are having the same issue. It's kind of weird that this has been going on. If you have this issue, comment down below. What have you guys done? Because I can't figure out anything for this system. It just keeps doing it for some weird reason. And like I said, because of that, when I go into the store, a lot of my tiles are just faded out and I can't, I, I can click on them and it will open up, but I don't know what I'm clicking on until I actually get to the next page and that loads. Outside of that, a lot of those, a lot of the issues I talked about are kind of gone now and I really don't seem to have those problems. I really enjoy that. Now, for me, I kind of like having the matte black everything. Like everything I own for the most part is matte black. It kind of adds to the wood, earthy tone I kind of feel like I'm going with <laughs> um, with my setup. And so it, it really just makes it feel really nice and enjoyable that my headset, my controller, my system all have the same matte black um, coloring from it. And I really like it. The only reason why I don't use a PlayStation 5 Pro controller, I think that's what they're calling it, um, or DualSense Pro controller, whatever they call it, is because right now it's mostly white with a little bit of black. The moment that they come out with an all black model, then I'll probably switch and get that one. But the fact that PlayStation has so many different skin options, so many different color options, you know, I really think that's a really great thing. I enjoy it and I love the look. Outside, moving away from that, is the games. Now, the games have been kind of weird. So for me, I feel like this has been a year that Sony has been releasing hardware. I believe the PlayStation 4 Pro controller came out this year, if not after I did the video last year. It was like the end of last year or the beginning of this year. Um, they came out with the PlayStation 5 Pro Controller. They came out with the VR headset 2. They're coming out with the PlayStation Portal device. They're coming out with their new headsets and their new earbuds and all that. So Sony has been really doubling down on a lot of hardware this year. And because they're doing so much on hardware, I've been hearing less and less and less about Sony's actual games, it feels like. And that's the big selling point about Sony. They have legendary IP use them and Sony now I know that these games are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it's just taking more to actually make these games they've been drip feeding games out and the games have been good I know Forspoken started the year off not a lot of people seem to vibe with that game but then it was like that came out and then we had Final Fantasy Forspoken and Final Fantasy are both like Square Enix games I think this year the only really big PlayStation made game I think was Spider-Man now I could be wrong I'm going off the top of my head but Sony hasn't really dropped out anything and the fact that Xbox technically has more exclusives that came out this year love them or hate them than Sony is a little weird um but regardless of that I still love my PlayStation but for me my PlayStation is more about playing it when exclusives drop or games like that. Now, I will also play my PlayStation over my Xbox when they have better deals. And sometimes Sony does have better deals on their games than the Xbox does. Or when they add a game into their streaming service. Now, as far as their streaming service goes, it hasn't really been much to be desired. And on top of that, they decided to raise the price. Now, I'm still a premium member when it comes to their PlayStation Plus service. But I keep saying I don't understand why I am because they don't really drop anything in the premium tier where I need to actually have it. I would probably be better at the more middle tier. But regardless, that service, they don't drop they don't drop games day of, like when they first come out. It's rare, they did like a couple, but for the most part they don't. And you know, every now and then they have some interesting games in there. 
but in reality the streaming service is still not fully there now they are doing cloud streaming which is weird because their PlayStation port, uh, portal device comes out, what was it, next week, I think, or something like that? And that device doesn't do cloud, but Sony's touting this cloud thing. I don't know. It's, it's really weird. <laughs> so, and one thing that still boggles my mind, and I guess Sony's just not going to do it. I know it's an architecture thing, but whatever. I would love for Sony to allow some type of backwards compatibility like that goes on to the PlayStation 3 or make it where if you own a copy of a PlayStation 3 game, even if you put that game into your PlayStation 5 and it has to use the internet to connect to PlayStation servers, it allows some level of backwards compatibility. Like even if Sony did that, that would be freaking awesome because I would love to not have to have, I have all the PlayStations, I, you know, I say this all the time. Not to have to turn my PlayStation 3 on to play this game. I can just use my PlayStation 5. That would be great. Like I said, just take uh, take a PlayStation 3 disc, stick it in my PlayStation 5. It connects to the internet so it knows that I own the game. And then I play it that way. I would be fine with that. I know there's some type of hardware issue where the PlayStation doesn't use the same architecture as the 3 and all that stuff. But I think that would just be something to help them. Because Microsoft is just killing it when it comes to backwards compatibility games compared to the PlayStation. So, you know... Sony, do something. Just do anything. Just something. You know, my point is there's a lot of things that Sony's doing this year. Like they're raising the price of a lot of stuff. We have the slim models that are coming out. And the slim models are going to cost more money if you have the all digital version than the one that's out right now. So it's a lot of weird things that Sony's doing with their PlayStation line. But as far as the system goes, if you already have the system, you know, I'm sure you're still enjoying it because there's a lot to enjoy about it. If you're thinking about picking one up, Ultimately, of course, you want to pick this up. The PlayStation 5 has been one of the most fun systems I've had um, in my entire life. You know, there's systems I feel like that you just remember when you was a kid. One of my favorite ones was the GameCube and the Dreamcast. Probably not everyone's favorite, but I remember those in the OG Xbox. And I just There's moments about those that I'll always remember. With the issues, even with the PlayStation 5, there are moments about it that I'll always remember. And PlayStation has been doing a more and more better job at immersing you into the game. And that's what I really enjoy about PlayStation and their games. Even games that are also on Xbox as well, like I own both of them on both systems, the PlayStation does have more immersion to it when it comes to a lot of games. And I really do enjoy that. Um, I definitely recommend you run out and get one if you have the means to do so. The caveat I will say is if you have the means to do so, get one now, at least if you're going all digital. I said this before in other videos and I still stick to it. If you want the all digital, get the one that's out now. If you want to have one with the physical drive, then get the new Slim because it's the same price. But if you want to know more of why I think that, check out the video I have on that. I'll throw it somewhere at the top, wherever it goes. Ultimately, the system is great. It's a great system. You're going to love it. You're going to enjoy it. I do still have issues with mine, and I had a lot when it first dropped, but Sony is getting better. Um, I just wish they had more exclusives. We're saying that for Sony, but they haven't dropped any. But I'm very curious to see what they're planning on next year. You know, it's all up in the air when it comes to Sony and the games. They're having a lot of issues right now on the financial side. They're letting people go. And I'm really curious what exclusive games are they coming out with next year that's not Final Fantasy. So, I, I, really, on the top of my head, I don't know. There's probably a lot. I just really don't know on the top of my head right now. But that's just my thought. Um, I wonder I wonder if Sony's going to slow down on some of their like exclusive deals. I don't know. I'm curious about that. But with the whole Activision thing going on, or now that that's over, I guess, you know, we'll see if we'll see if what Jim Ryan actually was saying was true is that Call of Duty is funding those first party games. So we'll see what's going to happen. Anyways, comment down below. What do you guys think? Do you have a PlayStation 5? How do you feel about it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? You know, did you trade yours in? I've seen some people in the comments on previous videos say they traded us in for Xbox Series X or vice versa. So what do you guys feel like? What have you done, you know, over these three years? Comment all that stuff down below. Thanks so much for watching again. Subscribe to the channel and also follow me on any of those socials I have in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.